Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another YouTube episode. We, we're still in my uh, Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Had a couple of weeks break. Um, I actually I think I had to have a break because um, I actually got bitten by something. I don't know what it was. Uh, I got bitten by something and I had a massive like allergic reaction on my arms and hands and stuff like that. But uh, I made a couple of weeks just to kind of recover from that. But welcome to Australia. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was, uh, that was a bit of fun that I had. Um, but yeah, we're back. And um, I actually launched my new membership on YouTube as well. So I've got the link in the description. Uh, you can become a member of my IMIT community and you can, you know, um, but come along and, and basically have different benefits, different perks and things like that. And, you know, the perks include getting badges, getting one-to-one uh, -one sessions with me, getting private sort of membership video, membership only videos on certain topics that you want. But also um, swag as well. So, you know, as, as my top membership, I'm going to be giving away, um, actually giving, you know, sending you different sort of swag like t-shirts, hoodies, caps, stuff like that. Uh, every couple of months. So um, that's it. The link's in my description. Have a look at my different membership and, and by all means become a member of the IMIT community. However, without further ado, let's get started with this episode. We are still in that Microsoft AVD topic. And uh, last episode, we actually, it was it was part two of the identity, sort of AVD spoiled identity. We're going to be on part three today. This is the final part where we're going to talk about remote session authentication. So single sign on with uh, Windows Hello for Business. Uh, we'll talk a bit about smart card with Windows Hello for Business, then in session authentication, so passwordless and smart card authentication. And then we're going to do part two of the configuring RDP properties, so like session, uh, read, session redirection and um, things like that. Uh, so let's talk about uh, remote session authentication, single sign on first. So if you haven't already enabled single sign on, or save your credentials locally. You'll also need to authenticate to the session host when you're launching a connection. Single sign-on or SSO allows the connection to skip the sort of session or credential prompts and automatically sign the user into Windows through Microsoft Entra authentication. For session hosts that um, are Microsoft Entra joined or even Microsoft Entra hybrid joined, uh, it's recommended to enable single sign-on using Microsoft Entra authentication. Now, in my experience, this is... Uh, there was all before SSO became kind of um, single sign on for AVD became uh, available GA. This was one of the sort of things that was stopping people from going to AVD and, and, and fully migrating to AVD because just that whole user experience piece was was, uh, was massive. And now single sign on is obviously generally available. It's 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 kind of embedded into AVD. Now you can't think of AVD without you know deploying single sign on. Uh, so it's a major major part of of this service in my opinion. Uh, Microsoft, authentic, uh, Microsoft Entra authentication is going to provide other sort of benefits and it includes passwordless authentication and support for like third-party identity providers as well. Without single sign-on, the client prompts users for their session host credentials for every connection. So imagine a user, maybe kind of, um, it can get a bit frustrating from having to put their credentials in time after time after time. And the only way to avoid being, being prompted is to save the credentials in the client. Microsoft also recommend you only save credentials on sort of secure devices as well to sort of prevent users from accessing your resources. So again, it's only, only advisable on sort of um, secure physical devices when you're doing um, saving credentials. Um, AVD also supports um, single sign-on for AD, ADFS as well. Um, so again, for, for those users or for those organizations that have sort of integrated ADFS with, with Microsoft Entra, um, AVD supports that for single sign-on as well. Uh, so let's talk specifically now about smart card when it comes to remote session authentication. So Azure Virtual Desktop supports both NTLAN or, or Manager, which is NTLM, and Kerberos for session host authentication. However, smart card or Windows Law for business can only use Kerberos to sign in. Uh, to use Kerberos, the, the client needs to be Kerberos security, needs, uh, Kerberos security tickets from a, a, what's called a KDC, which is a, a key distribution center. So this service needs to be running on a domain controller. To get tickets, the client needs to uh, is a direct uh, networking sort of line of sight. So you know, either the domain controller would be need to be hosted on Azure 
um, on the same network as your AVD or at least a VPN, so like if you're on an express route, if you're on premises domain controller. Uh, and as I said, you can get line of sight by connecting directly with your corporate network using a VPN connection or setting up KDP proxy server. Um, let's talk about passwordless um, in session authentication now. So once you've connected to your remote app or desktop, you, you might be prompted for authentication inside the session. So what we're going to try and explain now is how to use credentials other than the username and password in this type of scenario. So when we talk about in-session authentication, AVD supports, supports the passwords authentication using Windows Flow for business or security devices like uh, FIDO keys, which are like hardware keys, when using uh, Windows desktop client. Passwordless authentication is enabled automatically when the session host and local PC are using um, certain operating systems. That includes Windows 11 single or multi-session with the 2022-10 accumulative uh, updates for Windows 11, or Windows 10 single or multi-session versions of 20H2 or later with the 2022-10 uh, accumulative updates for Windows 10 as well. Or the over OS is Windows Server 2022 with the 2022-10 uh, community update for Microsoft Server um, operating system. So again, um, it's enabled automatically with those OSs. Uh, still on this passwordless topic, um, to disable passwordless authentication on your host pool, you need to customize the RDP properties. Now we're going to be, we've already looked at some of those, we're going to look at those in the demo shortly. Um, you can find the web auth n redirection property on the device redirection tab, which is what we're going to be looking at in the Azure portal, or set the redirect web auth n property to zero using PowerShell. Uh, when enabled, all web auth n requests in the session uh, are redirected to the local PC. And then you can use Windows Hello for Business or locally attached security devices to complete the authentication process. Uh, to access Microsoft Onto resources, Windows Hello for Business or security devices, you need to enable the FIDO2 security keys as an authentication method for your users. And then to enable this method, um, there, there's, a, there's a document I'll, I'll, I'll link in the description you can follow around FIDO2 security key methods. Uh, so let's talk about, uh, before we jump into the demo, let's talk about in-session authentication passwordless now. So to use uh, with smart card, so to use smart card in your session, you need to make sure you've installed the smart card drivers on the session host and enable smart card redirection. Um, you need to review the, the this comparison charts for Windows app and the remote desktop app to sort of make sure uh, you can use the smart card redirection as well. Okay, we're going to jump into a demo now. We're just going to continue to look at those and finish off looking at the RDP properties for ABD. So please join me in the demo. So we're back in the Azure portal, and here we're actually in uh, AVD, and we're in our demo AVD host pool. We're back on RDP properties, um, and in the last video, um, which was a couple, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at connection information and session behavior. So now we're going to look at device redirection display settings in advance. Um, so we've got the standard sort of audio and video redirection. So again, you can set sort of, uh, you can enable or disable your audio capture. Same with your video encoding um, and encoding video quality as well. You can have a high compression, um, so your quality might suffer when this is, is a lot of motion or medium, or you can have low compression video with high picture quality as well. Um, all, as again, as we go further down, we've got audio input location. So again, you can have different options around playing sounds on local computer by default, which is the default version value, or play sounds on a remote computer. Further we go down, we've got more local devices, so you've got camera redirection, MTP and PTP device redirection, which is um, redirection portable media players, driver storage, you know, like USB devices, things like that, uh, clipboard, com ports. As we go further down, you've got keyboard redirection as well. And here's where, where we kind of spoke about in this episode around smart card redirection and web auth and redirection. So here again, um, by default, the smart card device on the computer is available in the remote session, but you can disable it. And with web auth and redirection, so this is with the, if you want to use, um, when we talked about single sign-on, um, you can either disable this by default, it is enabled, so you'd have to come in here and um, not redirect it. Uh, as we go back up here, we go further on, we've got the display settings. So again, if you've got multiple displays, um, you can enable it, you can disable it. Um, and then you can also look at, all, you know, look at your selected monitors again. Um, so this is going to specify which local display to use for that remote session. 
Um, and again, you've got maximum size of your current display. Um, you know, screen, what sort of screen mode? Do you want remote sessions going to appear in a window? Or do you want it to appear in full screen? Dynamic resolution, your desktop size, and you can have actually specific height and width pixels for your um, session as well. And then finally, we've got these advanced settings. So this is actually where rather than setting the mini, you can actually, um, so we go back to advanced, you can actually configure the RDP properties and you can customize them. So again, if you look at the um sort of terminology it's drive store directs that, that's like a, a, a wild card uh, redirecting clipboard redirecting printer so again it comes in that colon and then the actual um command or the property as well so it tells you here the characters slash colon semicolon must be escaped with a backslash character from a property value so you c or it should be c so it should basically be c backslash um, so I just wanted to go through the remaining RDP properties that we saw in the last video um, because, well, no, the ones that we didn't see in the last video. Um, and we're going to continue, you know, with this series as well. We've got probably a rough, we're going to have about 20 episodes, I think, in this part of the series of this AVD because AVD is probably, in my opinion, the biggest one out of when you talk about Windows 365 and DevBox. AVD is probably the, well, it is by far the most um, evolved um, so that's why it makes sense to be more content on that as well. So we're going to be going deeper, dive into security and other elements of AVD. Uh, we'll continue doing demos. Well, probably not every episode, but um, we'll be doing demos in most of the episodes. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm starting a new membership uh, for community for my channel. I'm still trying to grow it as well. So again, the links are down there by all means. Have a look and, and become a member. Obviously, it does cost, but have a look at what sort of membership might suit you. If you want some swag, you might go for the membership level three if you just want sort of uh one-to-one -one kind of chat on, on on linkedin things like that you might go for two or you might just go for sort of ones where you get kind of membership badges and things like that so um yeah by all means look at my polls as well. i'm starting to do some polls within the community on, on my youtube channel as well i've got a poll again i'll put the link in the description i've got a poll around what sort of content you guys want to see you know compliance security you know as your infrastructure as a service so by all means let me know uh, so thank you for watching this video, and until next time, goodbye.